Let's see now. Back when I was 11, it would have been somewhere around uh, 1949. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Christmas 1949 in Calwell, New Jersey. My father had died two years before, and there was just me, mom, and my two sisters. We lived in a tiny apartment not too far from the local diner, where mom worked as a waitress. Oh, things were a whole lot different back then. Gasoline was 20 cents a gallon, a postage stamp was just three pennies, and a loaf of bread was a whopping 14 cents. Two quarters would pay for a dinner in a nice restaurant, and many workers made less than a dollar an hour. Hurry up, kids. It's time to eat. We're going to be late for church. What's our supper, Mom? I am starving. Peanut butter sandwiches and noodles. Peanut butter again? I wish I lived next door with Johnny. Last night I got two whole hamburgers for supper. Mm, that sounds so good. Mom, my hair looks awful. Like usual. Just sit down and eat, dear. I'll help you after supper. Mom, can I have a glass of milk, please? Sorry, Sammy. That milk is for something special. Just go ahead and get some canned milk out of the cupboard over there and mix it with water in that pitcher. It's just as good. Just as good? You're right, Mother. I can hardly tell the difference anymore. You could if you're normal, Becky. My name is Rebecca. Ugh, little bother. <laughs> Rebecca? Since when? Since I've grown up. It's time for you to respect your elders, Pipsqueak. Rebecca! Okay, okay. That's enough, kids. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this food. But most of all, thank you for our salvation. Now please help all of us to be kind to each other as we eat this delicious supper. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Christmas was always a pretty sparse affair at our house, but Mom did her best. Each one of us prized the small gifts that she put under the tree. Usually we get a tangerine, maybe some hard candy, and a toy from the Salvation Army. We didn't have much, of course, neither did anybody else we knew. But we did have the Lord, and you know what we found, and you know what we found out? The Lord is good to every one of his children. Much of our lives revolved around the little church four blocks north of our apartment. We loved it there. The music, the preaching, the wonderful people. We used to live for Sundays and Wednesday nights. If the doors were open, wild horses couldn't keep us away. Huh. And I especially remember Pastor Thomas. He was my hero. The Lord has been mighty good to our little church this year, hasn't he? <laughs> I know we might not have all the things we'd like to have, but did you know the average person seated here tonight is wealthier than 90%? Yes, I repeat, 90% than the rest of the world. We are rich in a lot of ways, but let's be thankful most of all for the greatest gift that was sent to the earth almost 2,000 years ago, the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to do something a little unusual this year. Let's take on plan a special Christmas offering for a really needy family here in Caldwell. I've contacted the folks at the Salvation Army and they're helping me contact that family. Since Christmas comes on Sunday this year, I'll take the offering on Sunday morning and deliver it on Sunday afternoon. Now, let's try to figure out what we can do with that for the next four weeks so we can share the love of Christ to someone in real need. Maybe we can reach them for the Lord too. Oh, Mom, isn't it exciting? Exciting? Yeah, about raising money for the poorest family in town. Oh, why well, yes, that's a very good idea. I've been such a dummy, complaining all the time, but there's lots of people worse off than us. That's right, Sammy, we have much to be thankful for. How much are we gonna give in the offering, Mom? Uh, well, I'm uh, sure we can give something. Something? Listen, you two, money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, kids, I'd love to help with that offering, but I really don't have enough to buy you any presents. Don't worry about us, Mom. We don't want any presents. <laughs> Who doesn't? We don't. We'd much rather see that poor family safe, wouldn't we, Becky? Uh, well, I, I suppose that would be nice. Good. Now, all we gotta do is get some extra money. Hmm, maybe I can find some extra work somewhere. Mom, you already work way too hard. We'll take care of this. <laughs> what can you do, baby brother? Well, being the nun of the family, I've got plans. What kind of plans? 
On the way home from church, I noticed quite a few yards still covered up with leaves. And it got me thinking, shouldn't they, shouldn't they be raked up before the snow comes? I suppose so. Has anybody asked you? They don't need to. I'll just go around and rake them all up and ask for donations. That's not a bad idea. Why, thank you, Miss Rebecca. <laughs> Mom, what if we use marsh instead of butter for the next four weeks? And water instead of milk? That would save a little, I suppose, if you kids don't mind. We can all have cornflakes for supper every night. With water on them. Yuck! <laughs> Come on, Becky, you need to lose a few pounds anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to lose a few pounds, and his name is Sammy. Come on, Becky, please. And what do you think, Beck? Well, I probably could do some extra babysitting. And I can help you. I knew it. I knew you'd come through, big sister. Come to think of it, I heard that Miss Brooks hasn't been able to clean her house since she had that fall two weeks ago. I bet she'd be glad to have my help, Mom. She just might, Katie. And she'll probably pay you, too. Mom, do you remember that delicious fudge you used to make? I sure do. It was my grandmother's recipe. Oh, Mom, that stuff was delicious. Mom, why don't you make it anymore? Well, it was awfully expensive with all that chocolate and butter. Why don't we see if Mr. Harris down at AMP will give us enough credits to buy the ingredients? We can go door to door selling the fudge and pay him back in no time. That's a great idea. I can help too. I volunteer to lick the pants, sir. <laughs> that just might work. We're gonna make lots of money, Mom. Just that, wait and see. That needy family's gonna have a Christmas they'll never forget. We'll give them tons of money. This is gonna be the greatest Christmas of all! <laughs> As the days passed, our excitement grew. We lived on beans. Cornflakes, peanut butter, and bologna. But we loved it. We were on a mission, and no sacrifice was too great. Let's get down the cookie jar and see how much money we've made so far. <laughs> you kids are going to wear that money out if you keep counting it so much. I've got some more, Mom. Mr. Miller gave me one whole dollar William breaking this lawn this afternoon. Why are you calling it one dollar William? Because I'm not familiar enough to call it one dollar Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy, I'm gonna burn that joke book of yours. Look at this. Miss Brooks gave me 50 cents for helping clean her house. That's wonderful, kids. What about you, Becky? Oh, you probably wouldn't be interested. Come on, Becky, did you get paid today? Well, I can't quite seem to remember. Becky! Oh, yes, now I recall. Today, Mrs. Smith paid me for all that babysitting I did last week. What do you think of this? One Lincoln and three Georges. Eight dollars. Oh, Becky, she must really appreciate you. Oh, it's nothing for someone as mature as I am. I can't believe it. Eight dollars. <laughs> Becky, I take back all the mean things that were said about you. You haven't even heard the best part yet. There's more? I gave Mrs. Smith a taste of your fudge, Mom, and she asked if you would make her two batches for a garden club party tomorrow night. But I sold the last piece this afternoon. Is she going to pay us? You better believe it. She said she'd give us five dollars if I delivered it by her supper tomorrow. Five dollars? But I haven't got the time, Becky. I've got to be at the diner in 30 minutes. Mom, don't you worry. I'll handle everything. The best cooks in the world are men, you know? No, oh, brother. <laughs> First, I'll turn on the clock. The stove. Uh, that's the clock, Sammy. Uh, yeah, I knew that, but I need a little adjustment. Everyone knows this is the oven control right over here. That's the oven, sweetie. Mom, I've got an idea. Why don't you explain exactly how to make the fudge to all of us? And Katie and I can be Sammy's, uh, helpers. Is that all right with you, Sammy? Well, okay, I guess. You could do some of these stuff like washing dishes and cleaning up. You're too kind, your majesty. What are we gonna call it? Call what? The fudge. How about something really novel, like fudge? It's worked so far. <laughs> nah, that's way too plain. If this stuff is really gonna go, it's gotta sound special. Mom, didn't you say it was your grandma's recipe? That's right, Katie. Well, we could call it Grandma's Fudge. That's better, but it still needs more pizzazz. This is so ridiculous. How about Grandma's Famous Fudge? Now you're talking, Katie. You're a marketing <laughs> genius. <laughs> and so it was born. Grandma's Famous Fudge. Mom gave us a 20-minute lesson in fudge making and then hurried out the door to work. By the time she returned home, we had burnt fudge all over the kitchen. And we kids were all mad at each other. But with Mom's help, before the night was over, we had two perfect batches of Grandma's Famous Fudge. <laughs>